continuing my ramaging for landscape shots and keeping to date order, I still haven't got much further than the E1. The image quality of this camera, even at 5 million pixels, was amazingly good, suitable for magazine reproduction because it used lenses designed for digital photography and not film. Near the end, I add one from the E500. I return to Lock Leven, which started the last program. It is a fantastic location. Now, this shot was taken late in the day, and it is from Balahulish Bridge, an excellent viewpoint for locking up the lock and into Glencoe, the water leading the eye into the picture. At this stage, I hadn't considered the technique of spot metering instead, so that the dark mountains do not cause accidental overexposure on ESP, I have adjusted the exposure bias to minus one stop. I am already saving to RAW, so any underexposure is adjusted in Lightroom. ESP metering has done an amazingly good job with this image. The high dynamic range could easily fool it. Obviously, the boat was coming towards me and mercifully it moved into an empty space in the water, so essential for a satisfactory composition. At last I graduate to aperture priority. As there is nothing much in the foreground, that hardly matters, except making sure that the camera uses a shutter speed that I can comfortably handhold at a low ISO. Since this photograph was taken, I have learnt that I could have kept it at 200 for optimum performance. Otherwise, the image is simply a question of being in the right place at the right time, getting out of bed early, and having the wit to know what the weather will do. Weather is the big player. I have even been asked how I added the rays in Photoshop. Oh dear. It is of course quite natural, known as Angel Rays. It was taken one November morning, not particularly early, but there had been a heavy overnight frost. The sun had warmed the landscape, evaporating moisture into a fine mist that, from certain angles, creates these rays. Finding a sympathetic landscape to accompany these rays becomes the challenge, and this for me was the best of the batch. You can easily argue that the light here is flat, but it shows every detail essential for a commercial world. The path leads the eye nicely into the scene, but there is no road conveniently nearby. Warrendale Knotts is a couple of miles east of Settle, and access is normally by Shanks's Pony. This landscape is for walkers. On the other hand, this view is from a car park, and there's a toilet there too, by the way. I used aperture priority at f11 to make sure that the signpost was sharp and the background. Depth of field is increased by using the wide angle end of a zoom and that four thirds technology permits increased depth of field at any setting than larger sensor formats. It was not even necessary to use the hyperfocal distance, however. The overriding feature of the photograph is clarity of light. Without that, then, no amount of twiddling of camera knobs is going to help. The photographer prays for that one brief moment on a cloudy day, hoping for the sun to make a brief and sudden appearance. Now the trick is to be in the right place at the right time, a skill achieved by looking at the sky and knowing the wind direction. But look where you are going first. Be aware of your surroundings. That is important. 
I was able to find this composition very quickly because I had already researched the area. Opposing forces are at play here. Flare or diffraction. Pointing the camera into the sun or an intense highlight can risk flare made worse by using a wide aperture. Stop down. And because of a small aperture, diffraction can occur degrading the image. Now, I will leave that to your judgment. But, believe you me, the perils of flare are worse. The small aperture has also helped to increase depth of field, showing every fine detail in the foreground rocks, and although on ESP metering, preventing the highlight from burning out has been successful. Aaron is a fantastic location. Spend a week and there will be more to photograph. The mountainous northern half of the island has many rivers rushing into the sea. Get in close and use shutter priority for a fast shutter speed that freezes the water, creating effects that escape the human eye and brain. A rare example of photo technique being better than us, however, by choosing a very fast shutter speed, be careful that the wide Aperture does not reduce depth of field. Four thirds has, of course, helped, and maybe two, the hyperfocal distance. The focal point is the mountain peak, but in arranging the landscape, I made sure that the river went diagonally across the scene. We cannot see beyond, but it is quite clear that it curves behind the trees, leaving its course to our imagination, possibly leading to that mountain. This is very much a commercial shot, the clarity of light allowing us to see every detail, and that is what publishers like. Another F-22 job, because the grass is very close to the camera and it is blowing in the wind, requiring quite a fast shutter speed to freeze it, a case of trying to balance two opposing requirements. Now this shot was taken with the E500, which has a few more pixels than the E1, and I was starting to experiment with a combination of spot metering and exposure bias, but it is early days yet. How chocolate box can you get? Don't be stingy with the colours. Give them some oomph by waiting for the best day. Save the raw and give it hell in Lightroom. A word of warning. You need a friend to take this picture. For this classic viewpoint, you stand in the middle of a road, not a place for tripods. Quick snap and then shoot off before yet another car comes around that darn corner. Sometimes I get criticised for the high colour content of my images. Whilst I acknowledge this, it is because much of my work is for a commercial market. I have to keep in mind that however I present my work, it is subject to how other photographers choose to view my work. Now I can be clearer about lighting. Landscape photography is not just about taking images early in the morning or late in the evening. My clients want to see a spread of images taken throughout the day and not just at each end. That is what I have tried to do in this program.